I'd be using probiotics. You may want to get on some glutamine powder, which can help absorption. Certainly staying away from problem foods is your, in your interest. And then you need protein not only just for overall health and for building and regeneration, but you need protein for building and strengthening the digestive tract, which in your case is really the area that we want to be focusing on. So try the bone soup. Have you done? Have you experimented with bone soup yet, Don? I haven't tried the bone soup. Go on the bone soup. The bone soup's easy to absorb. It tends not to cause digestive problems. Problems because it is it's liquefied and it's easy to absorb and it contains specific nutrients for building things, especially nutrients for building the the lining of the digestive tract as well as the connective tissue of the digestive tract. Uh, also, in addition to bone soup, you may want to experiment using uh, using uh, smoothies. Have you tried whey protein at all? I've tried. You know, the the one world whey is about the only way that I've tried. Do it. That's the best. You don't need anything. It's, it's, Extremely expensive though. It's only that's right. I mean, it's not really that expensive. It's like two bucks a dose, you know, two maybe even three bucks a dose. It's like a couple hamburgers. It's all relative, you know. It may be expensive in absolute terms. It may be sixty or seventy dollars in absolute terms, but relatively speaking, right. you're spending two or three bucks for a dose of protein. Now, where are you going to go to get a good, healthy dose of protein for two or three bucks anywhere? Nowhere. So, so yeah, in absolute terms, you know, it might be expensive, but when you compare it to everything else, it's not expensive at all, and it's well worth it. Uh, it's an awesome product. Plus, you're supporting my friend Stephen, who does a lot of really good work uh, in, in the world of nutrition. In any case, whey protein smoothies, bone soup, liquefy your protein, use digestive enzymes with all your protein, the ultimate enzymes, and you may want to try still experimenting with the eggs. Sometimes people can eat raw eggs, but they can't eat cooked eggs. Sometimes they can eat soft-boiled eggs, but they can't eat scrambled eggs. Sometimes if you use your eggs with digestive enzymes, that will help you process them. So experiment a little bit and always finish off your protein meals with a shot of apple cider vinegar, which can help improve digestion and absorption of protein. All right, Don, I've I got to move on. Is there anything else that you got? Sounds good. Um, magnesium oxide or magnesium, what's the other one? Glycinate's the best. The osteomag nice. glycinate is the best form. Thanks so much for your call, bro. Thank you. Thank okay, you. take care. All right, Lena in Texas, welcome to the bright side. What's going on? Lena, Lena baby, what are you doing? <gasps> Hi, Ben. Hey, Lena. What's How up? are you? I enjoyed your presentation in Austin. Oh, thank you. And, yes. Oh, awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I have two quick questions. The first one is about the Knox gelatin powder. Yeah. Do you, you said to mix that and drink it right away, or do you let it sit? It doesn't matter if you drink it right away. It's collagen, basically. Gelatin is cooked collagen. It's processed collagen. Yeah. So when you eat gelatin, Knox gelatin, or the glucogel cast from longevity, you're eating collagen. You're eating the raw material building blocks for making your own collagen, which is the bulk of your connective tissue. The, large, the largest proportion of your connective tissue is collagen. Collagen, it's the most important protein in the body. When you eat that stuff, it helps your body make that stuff. So, yes, uh, it doesn't matter if it's cooked or not. Uh, it doesn't ma- I'm sorry, it doesn't matter if it's uh, fresh or not. Uh, just get it in your system. If you don't want Knox gelatin, you can use the glucogel caps. Or bone soups will get you some gelatin, too. Yeah, I made some of that bone soup. It is awesome. I it's enjoyed it very great. much. And then this, my second question is, is about the pickled beets. I yeah. love, love isn't, beets. Isn't and one awesome? eat too many. No. Well, beets are, have some sugar in them, have a yeah, lot of sugar in them. That's so my concern, yeah. It's the sweet taste that you want to stay away from as best as possible. A tiny little bit of sweetness is good. Uh, it'll, it'll spike your insulin just a tiny little bit so you get more nutrients in the body. But long-term ingestion of this sweet, sweet taste is something that you want to stay away from, and beets are incredibly sweet. It's not like yes. processed kind of sugar, but still, it's the sweet taste that you want to be careful of. Uh, if they're fermented, that's gonna, that makes a difference. Uh, but if I would keep the beets, I wouldn't go crazy on the beets as, as valuable as they are. Beets are amazingly valuable food. But I wouldn't go crazy on the beets. But a little bit of beets certainly, it's a great health tool, great for the liver, great for the blood, a wonderful source of, of, of uh, carotenes and, and plant uh, and phytonutrients. It's a wonderful food, beets, but just don't go crazy on them. Right. And then the last question is, you, you're talking often about glutamine powder. What's yeah. the difference? There's an L-glutamine and then Same. is there is there There's no R-glutamine. No, no. They, sometimes they'll call it L-glutamine, but it's all glutamine. There, it, it's the you know, thing. L, okay. whenever you see L in front of a, a chemical, it's to distinguish it from R. L means left, R means right. And there's some chemical reasons why a, chemi- why a particular molecule will be designated as a left-handed molecule or a right-handed molecule. Uh, some chemicals need to be in the L form. Some need to be in the R form. But all glutamine, all the glutamine that you buy is going to be L-glutamine, even though it may not say L-glutamine. I wouldn't worry about the L or the R. Okay. Okay. Well, you're awesome. Thank Thanks you. So Lena. Much. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Dave in Michigan, got a couple minutes here. What's going on? 
Ben, love you. Uh, uh, boy, that just threw me off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, alkaline water. I want to know. Your oh, opinion. Dave, I can't. And Dave, you got. Dave, you're. You're. I can't understand you. Talk quieter Sorry. because there's something up with your phone. Okay, how's this? Yeah, that's okay. We have a bad right. connection for some reason. What's your question, sir? Alkaline water, and my wife is getting little black, uh, like, freckles on her body. All right. Uh, alkaline water is just, in my opinion, a waste of money. By the time the uh, water gets into your system, by the time it goes into your stomach, it's not alkaline anymore. Now, if there's minerals in the alkaline water, you may get some of the advantage of the minerals. But some of these processes that water manufacturers use to alkalinize their water uh, to a, via electrical energy or whatever, they're, I'm not even sure what they're doing, uh, that's really a waste of money. Now, mineral water is a little bit different. That's a type of alkaline water that will get you some good minerals. Um, that's a little bit different. But I wouldn't waste my money on alkaline. In fact, alkalinization through food is really a very misunderstood and overrated health process, and, and maybe we can talk about that tomorrow if you want to call back, Dave. Black freckles on the body involve pigmentation. Uh, pigmentation issues are always about stress, cortisol, nutritional deficiency kinds of stresses. They may involve hormones as well. Stress hormones like estrogen uh, may be involved in pigmentation. If you have, are getting dark spots on the body, consider it to be a sign of an overloaded stress response. Thanks for your call, Dave. All right, I'm Farmer Spen. That's all the time we have for today. We'll continue our discussion on connective tissue tomorrow. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now. Self-reliance, survival supplies, survival skills, national experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Pepper Network along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you. Has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day. Unique, affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com.